Hello, good afternoon and welcome to my humble model railway, Bedstead Junction. Now, today, uh, something here for you Midland fans. Uh, normally, of course, uh, you see my uh, videos are generally dominated by Great Western Green Engines. And today you're going to be seeing a locomotive in um, LMS Crimson Lake. Number 1000, it's an LMS compound engine. We'll explain what a compound engine is uh, quite uh, shortly. But we'll talk a little bit about this model and why it's taken it a little while for me to, uh, to be able to get this ready for me to show it, uh, uh, to you. Because this, this actually arrived on the 28th of um, January. It's now the 1st of February. I've been waiting for um, uh, some parts to come and a tool. Now, I bought this at a, re a, a, a pretty good price. It was actually um, it was on offer basically, so I accepted the uh, seller's offer. Uh, now it was described as being in, in um, immaculate condition or in excellent condition, let's say, with everything included, like the uh, instructions, um, the accessories, which are basically a couple of uh, vacuum pipes. Everything was going to be complete, and it was. Okay, got the model, looks at it, quite delighted with it, and I put it on the onto the tracks. Turned up the controller and it didn't move. Or at least if it did, it was moving very slowly with the wheel spinning round in a, rather crazily. And I thought, oh, okay, I know what's gone on here. I know what's going on. And yeah, the traction tyres are, are go are, were gone on it. Uh, there was one traction tyre missing on one side and then the remaining traction tyre, when I went to look at that today, it was completely rotten. It just fell off as soon as I touched it. So, um, it's one of those things actually if you're going to be buying a second hand locomotive it's one of those occupational hazards in my in my view i wasn't going to send it back to the seller the seller did accurately describe it and if they're not a seller that's used to um you know these particular locomotives and the traction tires then you know if they don't know they didn't know so that that is fine with me now what we got to do then we have to get all of some traction tires and a tool now my first shout out uh, of the day It was a Barry Davis with his model railway because he was talking about traction tyres and what traction tyres he puts on his uh, locomotives when you're talking about these uh, locomotives like this the compounds, the counties, the 440s okay and it turns out what he's been using is uh, Marklin traction tyres I think Marklin's a German company I'm going to go careful not to uh, just uh, work in front of my local there. Right. Marklin 7152 traction tyres. Now they look far too, looking in that bag there, they look far too small, don't they, to go on. They do stretch, okay. They stretch an awful long way. I was able to put mine on there with a, with a round screwdriver, so it wasn't sharp or anything. You know, nice nice round screwdriver, like a, like, like a small fillet screwdriver. I might as well get them on with that. I think you know, Sony might be saying no, but I, I did it all right. And um, other people might have other other ways of putting them on. Well, that's how I did mine, and they went on uh, reasonably easy. Uh, the first time, and, it's, and it's, it's a little tip for anybody who's uh, fitting these traction tires for the first time, it was going clunk a clunk a clunk a clunk a clunk a clunk as it was going round the round, round the track, and it turned out that I twisted the traction tire. Okay, so I had to remove the traction tires and put them back on again. And with a bit of practice, you can get these traction tyres on relatively easily, okay? So if you're ever doing this for the first time, it can be fitty for the first time, but it gets a little bit easier the more, the more you do it, okay? So I got these traction tyres from Peter Spares. I think they come in at about £7. £7.75 So for 10 traction tyres, that's not bad, considering it's more clean, so they probably have to import them, okay? That's not bad, is it? And, it's, and as you can see now, my engine is going around the track very, very well. Now, the thing which I've waited for the longest, and it's not the fault of the seller, obviously, is how long it's going to take to come in the post. And, um... It's one of these. 
is a Hornby R913 Conrod nut spanner, double ended. Okay, so you've got two sights on there. Hornby accessories, this is what just arrived today, double O gauge. I'm going to get this to focus, I'm going to get the answer. Oh, there we are. It looks like that, okay, so you've got a small end and a big end on there. Yep. I need the I needed the, the, the large of the two so it fits the crank pin nuts because you cannot get the traction tires on or off without removing the crank pins. Okay. Again, can be fiddly but not too bad once you're used to it, okay? Now what I did, um I um took it apart. Now what I would advise you to do, again, this is me, uh, do one side at a time, okay? Don't take both sides apart and then put because what you can do then, you've got the side that's still together, you can refer to that when you're reassembling the, the side you, you're working on, okay? And that's something I learned when I was working on cars once. <laughs> you take apart the one on one side and leave the other side all together until you finish that side and then you can, work, you, you can look at the other side and, and look at it to see what it looks like when it's all together, okay? So that's not, not a bad little tip, that. Huh? Now, the body on these can be a little bit fiddly to get on or off, but um, not again, not too bad. I found it a little bit easier to do everything with it in a locomotive cradle. Okay, so we'll talk about that as well. Um, I use a locomotive cradle like this, PR70, Pico Electric Servicing Cradle. I think it probably cost about, about eight pounds to get one of those. And you might think, well, that's a lot of money to pay for a bit of foam. But for the amount of frustration it will save you, it's well worth getting. Now, this is a Hornby Railroad model. So it's not going to be as uh, finely detailed as, say, for example, the Batman one. But you're going to be probably getting this at half the price, OK, uh, of, of what a Batman one might cost you. Probably even less. So I, it's a 440 compound, and we'll talk about it. We'll go through that in a minute about the history of the locomotive. Now, first of all, we'll talk about the actual um, this from a Hornby point of view. These, these, whether you get a compound, a county, hunt, or scores class, okay, railroad locomotive, they all come with the same instruction leaflet. Okay, because they're more or less in common, they've got a lot in common with each other, how they're, how they're assembled. This, look, this looks like um, a good representation of what my compound looks like when I took it apart. Okay, you can see it's got in red all the different oiling spots on there. I just take the tender top off, I haven't tried that actually. They're clip fit, pull the body upwards to disengage from the chassis. Okay, yeah. right. Uh, DCC ready. Okay, so it turns out to do the DCC, and again it shows you where to oil it. I know not everybody's into boxes, but to give you an idea about how it comes, it comes in usually the polystyrene packaging like this, with your vacuum pipes there, the holes in the back are so you can put the, lo put the locomotive out of the packaging. And we're looking at our 3063 NMS Compound 440. Our 3063 NMS Compound 440. Now please excuse my uh, blunder I made on one, one of my previous videos where I was talking about uh, a whole class locomotive. I was actually holding up, uh, demonstrating the wrong box for you. I did put a little note in the beginning of, uh, uh, on my video about that, so I do apologise for that. Um, easily done, I and mean, we all make mistakes on videos. I mean, I know I'm not, I'm not. Uh, I, if you want perfection, then uh, you know I, I can't give that to you, unfortunately. Uh, but there you are. I did double check that was the right box this time. So let me say, Hornby Railroad uh, class. Now the NMS compounds were a very, very successful locomotive. Okay, they came out in the early 1900s. Now, compounds were used, were used quite a lot on the continent. Now, I know the Great Western Railway tried a compound locomotive, but they dropped the idea. They didn't. Uh, they decided to go ahead with a what they call a simple uh, engine. You know, which just 
regular steam powered and, and the steam once it's um, used in the cylinder just gets exhausted out but on this one what you get is a three cylinder locomotive but it's got a high pressure cylinder in the middle and two lower pressure cylinders on the outside and the idea is once the, once the steam's been into the high pressure cylinder it then goes through the low pressure cylinders to recycle the steam for more efficiency Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm looking at some notes here. Um, I mean, I, I can thank Wikipedia for the notes, actually. So, these were developed from a series of five locomotives, 2631 to 2635, introduced in 1902 by Samuel Weech Johnson, which had a three-cylinder compound arrangement on the Smith system, with one high-pressure cylinder inside the frames and two low-pressure cylinders outside. A new Smith starting arrangement on the first two locomotives, independent control of high pressure and low pressure valve gears was available. From 1905 onwards, Johnson's successor Richard Dealey built an enlarged and simplified version, eliminated all of the Smith refinements, and put in his own starting arrangement, making the engine simpler to drive. <coughs> These locomotives were originally numbered 1000 to 1029, but in the 1907 renumbering scheme, the, uh, the five Smith Johnson uh, locomotives become 1000 to 1004 and the Dealey compounds 1005 to 1034. Ten more of these were added in 1908 to 1909. And the original Johnson locomotives were all subsequently renewed as Dealey compounds, including the now preserved 1000, which you can right here now, which was rebuilt and outshot the superheater in 1914. I think this how it's been preserved actually. This is the only one that's been preserved is number 1000. And it is, it was preserved in its 1914 uh, form as far as I'm aware. And they were all withdrawn between 1948 and 1953. Now, it's my belief that up until the 1920s, these were the Premier Express Power locomotives. Their classification was a 4P. So they're quite powerful for 440 locomotive. And these were probably as a consequence of something which the Midland Railway always adopted up until um, up until after the First World War, as far as I'm aware, of a small engine policy. They wanted small engines lightly loaded running fast and frequent services. It was only from the 1920s onwards that these were superseded by larger locomotives. Of course, that as came about on all the, all of the railways, really. Uh, the trains got heavier and heavier. And so they needed more powerful locomotives in the end. Usually 460s, 462s. Uh, the Great Western went over to 460s. Um, of course, they, and the Midland went over to, to build uh, bigger locomotives, like the Black Fives and things like that. So, but up until the 1920s, these were the premier NMS locomotive. Very, very nice. I've got a bit of a soft spot for 440s. Now we're going to put this one up on the Lazy Susan in just a moment. I'm going to have a little look at her. A little bit more close up and I'll explain to you I mean I've gone over this um, in one of my previous locomotives I think it were uh, videos um, all about uh, I think it was calling uh, all budgets in which I talked about the difference between uh, sort of the budget locomotives and the more sort of um, top of the range ones and here this is what we're going to cover as well all right so let's go around one more time and I'll bring 1000 in Okay, now that I've got the traction tyres on, very, very, very pleased. So once again, thanks to Barry Davis for the recommendation on the traction tyres. I'm sure Hornby do the right traction tyres for these, but it's trying to work out which ones. 
And I know it sounds daffy, but um, I, I think it will be the large traction tyres so which Hornby sell. But they do come out; they do seem to come under a large number of different varieties. And um, when I saw that, Hawk, that Barry um, Davis had been uh, retiring his locomotives, including the um, the two P, his two P's and compounds and his uh, four, you know, other four four O's. Then I decided, well, if, if they fitted, fitted for him and he was happy with them, I'd do the same for me. So that's why I'm using the Marklin tyres on this particular locomotive. OK, so what I'm going to do, we're going to hopefully pull gracefully into the station now. Now, I'm going to try not to kick the tripod on the way over. We're in a very, very uh, restricted space. OK, I'm trying to manoeuvre in my size 10 feet around all of this. So uh, let, let, let the fun begin. Here we go. Right, so we'll just check we've got the point set for the for the station. And then we're gonna bring her in. Right. Let's see how we do. Oh look at that. That's good cheer with the points, no problem. Controllability for me. Perfect. I think it's got oh, I think it's got tender pickups as well as loco pickups as well, which makes it a lot easier for you to get over points and things. Let's have a little look at her and just see her in close up. So I've not had much of a chance to look at her properly. Right, yes. Okay, so we're um, I'm in the station now. Before we put on to the lazy suit, let's have a, a, a closer look at it. You can see the 440. See the outside cylinders there. Number 1000. NMS. All nice in Crimson Lake. Beautiful. Absolutely no, lo a lovely colour, Crimson Lake. Okay, so quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uncouple this locomotive. I'm going to try not to lose my spanner. i find somewhere safe for that, I think. Mm, put it somewhere safe. That's famous last words, isn't it? Okay, so we keep all of that until I, I think of somewhere. Right. Let's see if we can uncouple this locomotive. Now... This one I use to uncouple with. We'll get over the coach and you can see. Hopefully this will work uh, a treat. There we go. Okay, you can buy these off eBay. Okay, manual uncouplers. So easy I did that then. Okay, so we're going to look for our lazy Susan now. Of course, it's going to be just out of reach. Uh, we'll be going on to the Lazy Susan. Advantages and disadvantages of the Hornby Railroad range. Okay, let's uh, let's zoom out just a little bit. We can have a nice look under there. Well, and, uh, no, an attractive looking locomotive, I think, in my opinion. It's got um, kind of a sort of yellowish lining round uh, the wheel splashers. I don't think it's got cab windows, but the windows are very, very small. I mean, if, if they... Maybe they have, I don't know. No, there's only one way to find out, I suppose. It's such a small, small area. I do believe they have, you know. My goodness. Yeah, I do believe it has. I mean, well, from what I can see here, it looks like it's got cab windows in there, which is good. Okay, you can see um, the safety valves there and the whistles up at the top. That's all well represented there. Okay. Perfect. Nice little steam down there. 
Got additional additional detail just on the smoke box there. Uh, separately fitted handrail down the side. Lovely uh, lining running down the, the length of the uh, running plate there. I do believe that the body is all plastic construction, but with the Hornby Railroad range, I mean, you, you can expect that, can't you, really? Okay, this is more or less a, a, a kind of a budget range for, of locomotives, and also they're designed to be durable, to allow, allow it to be played with. That's all nicely made, uh, done out. Look at that on the tender, love. You've got the um, Crimson Lake. I don't know if that's focusing very well, but the, the tender, that's all picked out in black, all the suspension springs. Um, the cab's got rivets on top. I, mean, I don't know if you can see that from here, but the cab's got rivets. Um, there'll be a bit of a hump, hump in the coal out there. Now that's because these were probably once tender powered, okay? I'm sure they are loco powered now, and you saw the diagram. I've also had the body off this, and yes, there is a nice big uh, chunky motor in there. Quite a good one. This one, it comes with the larger D couplings, okay? Not, not the NEM type couplings. I can live with that. I've got to be honest with you, a lot of my rolling stock has got the larger D type couplings on there, so that is not a problem for me. Okay, some people might uh, say otherwise. Um, on the other side, again, there's more detail of the smoke box there. I don't know if we can see that very well. Moving along, you can see the lining on there. Look, lovely along the, the running plate there. Number 1000 NMS. Again, springs picked out nicely on the back there. Okay, you're not going to get as many separately fitted parts as you would maybe on the on the uh, on, on a top of the range locomotive, but for me, um, these railroad um, locomotives have got a kind of a kind of a playability feature. I mean, I wasn't you know, when, when I was working on this, and I got to take the body off and um, and did, did the traction tires. I could see down there. I can point to it. I point to it with a spanner. That down there, I don't know if you can see it very clearly. But that's one of the that's the crank pin you need to remove there. Okay. Don't worry if if the one if that rod there leading the valve gear pops out, they're easy to pop back in again. That's not that's not a problem. Okay. But really you need to just undo those nuts there with the with the spanner. Okay. And then it enables the uh, connecting rods to come up come away. Out of the way, be swung out of the way, so you can actually reach uh, the traction tire. I put the new traction tire on. Okay, on mine, obviously, getting the old traction tire off wasn't a problem because uh, one of them wasn't there and the other one was broke anyway, and it just fell off. But um, getting the traction tire on, it can, like I say, it's fiddly, but it can be done. Okay, and those um, Marklin traction tires, which I showed you a minute ago, the uh, seven one five two. They fit fine, okay? Now let's have another, a little bit of, uh, more of a look at this particular lovely locomotive here. So on the front. You've got your little gap hole there to put your, um, your steam pipe on. The buffers. No, they're not sprung. And again, I wouldn't expect them to be on a lo on something like this. Again, absolutely fine. Some of the reviewers find sprung buffers absolutely pointless. Okay, I I would say possibly the, the only the main justification for a sprung buffer is that when you bought when you paid out an, a, a heck of a lot of money for a really dear locomotive, it's supposed to be a sign that you're going to be getting your money's worth. Um, just there, again, solid buffers. Get the coupling down there. I think the coupling needs to be maybe be lubed up a little bit there. Okay, you can see the tender there as well. Nice detail there. You got the like, the filler um, where the filler caps go. Rivets long there as well. You might want to be able to see that when there's not actually rivets represented there as well. Just fine. The cab, again, you're not going to get a fully paint, a fully decorated cab on the Hornby Railroad range. Not normally. Uh, again, though, 
I'm not that worried. I mean, it is similar to the county or the, the whole class. There is detail in there. It's all black, okay? And you could probably liven that up by adding a loco crew. And I'm going to be t I'm tempted to do that, and I probably will. I'll probably um, take the tender uh, off, away from the locomotive. Let's have a look and see what other um, nice features this locomotive's got. Sorry if I re repeat anything, but, um, you know... Separately fitted handrails there. Nice handrail represented there. Would I recommend one of these? You betcha. <laughs> <coughs> Simple as that. Very nice locomotive, okay. LMS number 1000 in Crimson Lake. I think even on the front, you can get your running number on there. Look, see it, 1000? Again, you've got your um, your gap there, like so where you, you 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 put your uh, vacuum pipe on. Should you wish to wish, wish to do so? A lovely representation of a four four zero. And like I said, I, as far as I'm aware, I mean, I, when I looked on the internet, there was a a, a, a few of these on on the internet available on, on on that famous auction site eBay. Okay, and um, I, I, I think they're worth looking at. I really do. I mean, for how much you pay, I, I paid about, <coughs> pardon me, I paid about, I paid less than £70 for mine, as far as, as far as I can remember. But saying that, I need to get the new traction tyres for it. And, um, would I have sent it back because of the traction tyres? Well, some people might have done. Um, it gave me something to do. And I didn't want to lose locomotive. I was quite happy with it. It's, it's in good condition body-wise and uh, cosmetically and everything else. Uh, no bits have fallen off of it or anything else. Just the traction tyres. And so I was quite happy to, to work on this this afternoon. I get those traction tyres fitted. I had to fit them on both sides. Really nice. Really, really nice little looking locomotive. Okay. So there we are. That's our Crimson Lake. Oh, just beyond this here. I'll just see what we've got on the layout as well. We've got the Somerset and Dorset 2P. That Hornby 1 is, but it's got the, it's, it's, that's a tender powered one. So the motor's in there. Uh, just over uh, in the far distance area, you can see it's a, I got a, an 040 industrial lo locomotive. And also, I've got the Gin T.O. over there as well. So I've got a, quite a nice running session going. All Midland. All Midland, really. Well, the 2P is like Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, of course. But that's uh, a, t a 2P of the Midland Railway locomotive, really. The 2Ps and the compounds are different locomotives to, to each other. Uh, the 2P, as far as, I'm, uh, as far as I'm aware, I think it's just got the two inside cylinders. Whereas this is a more powerful locomotive. This is a 4P much more powerful proposition and it is a larger engine okay this one here do i uh forever i was looking across at the ginty still okay so we're going to put it back onto the traction just a moment we'll get her running now if you like what you see please press like and subscribe if you're not just subscribed yet and ring that bell uh, it makes a big difference to my channel i'm getting right up near 100 subscribers now I'm getting quite close to that and uh, it's, it's given me the, uh, you know, the impetus to, to make more videos. Oh, I've got three Midland coaches there. So the coaches there are correct. Midland Railway coaches, maroon. They were dapple. Bit old, these coaches, I should imagine. They're a bit draggy at the moment. I, I, bit draggy, perhaps. I, I've oiled the wheels and everything. We'll have a look at what we can do about those. But they're, they're all right. They're, they, they do the job. They're fine. Somebody might have added extra weight to them, I don't know. Okay, but they're fine. Okay, so I should bid you farewell then. And thank you very, very much for watching. We'll go back one more time to our lovely locomotive there. And I should bid you uh, farewell. And bye-bye. Thank you.